Hey everyone, welcome back to the Reclaimed Ranch. My name is Tara, and today I have kind of a different take on the video. So look at these super cute books in the garden. I am just so obsessed with these. I wish I knew who whose photos those were so I can give them credit, um, but I couldn't resist. My friend sent that to me and I was like, we need to do a workshop with this. So I'm also gonna show you how to do it. So I went to Home Depot, got a couple of different size bricks, and I'm gonna be using my IOD molds. That little door one there is called Hidden Hollows. And I'm using the Amazing Clear Cast resin, or casting resin. This one is the one that sets in like 10 minutes, so you gotta work fast. And you wanna work in small batches. If you get too much of the resin, then what happens is it heats up too fast and it'll harden too quick before you can even get it in the mold. So resin, I always wear my gloves. Um, any kind of epoxy or resin, it's a good idea to have your PPE. Um, this one doesn't smell too awful bad, but you could still wear a respirator just to be on the safe side. And it's equal parts of A and B. So you pour those into separate containers, then you mix it for about 20 seconds and pour it into the mold. And you can see up at the top there, um, that mold will turn white when it's completely hardened. And so what I did was I painted the first brick with Fusion's um, pressed fern. And apparently I didn't record that, so sorry about that. And so what I did was I went ahead and got on the internet and just printed out a photo of the Secret Garden. This was my favorite book when I was a little girl. And so um, I just wanted to have a, a guide to go off of for the freehand. I did do it freehand, but if you don't like to do freehand, you can also do the same thing. Just print something out and then use carbon paper to trace your outline and then you can go back over with the paint. So this was just a fun, relaxing way to just express my artist inner peace and um, yeah, I I just am I'm addicted to these now. I've done two, but I'm like, I am so excited to do the workshop and get like a whole little collection. <laughs> And those pictures that I saw, they weren't just garden-themed books. They were, of course, they had Charlotte's Web and all kinds of um, really old, old books from the old days. And so what I did was I made a bunch of these molds, and I went ahead and painted the door part with woodwick, and now I'm going to go in with that pressed fern. On There's a bunch of leaves and uh, vines growing up that door there. So... Um, it had a door kind of like this on the, the book cover that I had printed out. So I kind of wanted to replicate that. But I just took my time and used a really little artist brush and kind of got into those details. And then after I did that, I went ahead in with some Fusion Conservatory. And that's just going to, I'm going to dry brush that right over the top of that pressed fern. And it's just going to highlight all the details in the the leaves and stuff on that vine turned out really, really pretty. So definitely it does take quite a while with all the painting, but it's just so fun. And um, I, got a, I got a kick out of doing this. And so I thought that door needed a little bit more depth to it. So I'm gonna go in with the DIY dark wax and just press some wax down into the crevices and kind of pull that, that detail out of the wood. And then I'm gonna use a shop towel just to kind of wipe back the top part and leave the dark in the down in the crevices and the dips. So now what I need to do is I need to kind of figure out where I want this door to go on the front part of the book and um, see how much 
I can use at the top to put the title on. So again, I'm just going to go in with my free hand and put the secret garden in pencil first. And that way, like I did there, I can always erase if I make a mistake. And then I'm going to go in and paint it with the yellow paint again. And um, one thing I did forget to do on these books that I went back and looked at the pictures, the previous pictures, was they did have like a white top and like the end so like a book page would look and then they put little lines so I'm gonna go back and do that to the two that I did and it makes it just look a little bit more realistic uh, I got too excited and took it up to the shop already so that people that come in can um, look at them and know that we're gonna be doing a workshop on those if they're interested so I'll have to bring them back home and redo it but that's okay <laughs> Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just take that yellow and kind of make those little ridges pop out like the book spine would actually look like. And I thought it just turned out really cool. The shape of these bricks are just perfect for a book. <laughs> it just looks so realistic. And you can always do all kinds of different things. I did like to use the molds on this, but I'm sure you can also decoupage. You can do transfers. Um, I love these 3D molds though. It just makes it pop out and, and catch the eye a little bit more. So I'm going to use my tight bond um, to go ahead and adhere these molds to the brick. And I put a pretty good amount on, but I'm going to use my finger to smooth it out. But I'm not going to go right up to the edge. I'm going to leave just a little bit of a gap because when I push it down, I want that uh, glue to seep through. And once I see that, then I know that it's got good adhesion. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over, press it down, and then I'm going to leave this sit overnight and it will be ready to go in the morning. And see how the glue is just starting to pop out. I'm going to move it a little bit, push down a little bit further and make it come out a little bit more. And that way I know that the glue is getting all the way across that mold. Then I'm just going to use my baby wipe to clean up the leftover. This glue dries clear, so it's not that big of a deal. And this is the next one. I'm deciding to go with the Seaside Blue in the Fusion Paint. And I chose to do Fusion because it does have a sealer already in it. However, I may go back over with the top coat um, in matte, just to because they're going to be outside. It just gives it an extra layer of protection out in the, the elements. So I'm not giving it like a super full coat. I do like the color of this brick, so I wanted it to kind of pop through. But I'm going to put just a, a thin coat all the way around the entire brick, let it dry. And then this set of 
molds I did was from the Dewdrop Pond from IOD. So it has frogs and snails and hummingbird and a fern. And I thought it would be really cool to do, I called this book The Garden Friends. And just has all the little little animals and bugs and whatnot that would normally be found around a garden or a pond. And I thought it turned out super cute. Now when you take the molds out, that resin has the extra little pieces around the edges. So I just carefully take my X-Acto knife and just kind of peel those pieces off to give it a nice clean line around the border of the the molds there and so you just got to be real careful because exacto knives are super sharp and sometimes it can be a little tough to get through there so I went through my fusion paint and just randomly picked a whole bunch of different colors because you can see I've got a dragonfly a hummingbird a frog a snail so um, I'm just gonna go through and, and pick the colors that I'd like to see of these animals and these little bugs out in the wilderness so one cool thing about this dragonfly though is I took my metallic pearl color and it's got like a pearl essence to it and so it shimmers so their wings are really kind of like that in in real life they kind of shimmer when the Sun hits them so I thought that was kind of a cool little touch there and then I'm just going to do a couple of different blues to ombre his body and so I'll let you listen to some music and I will uh, catch you after I've painted all these guys.
All right, so when I was done with this hummingbird with the blues, what I did was I kind of took the metallic pearl color again because, you know, if the sun hits those beautiful hummingbirds, it just gives that instant shimmer and shine. So I just put it over the top of the entire bird, both of the blues, and it turned out so pretty. And I'm going to go in here with my Fusions Color Ash and just pop the eye and the beak and the, the little feet out with those. And this guy is done. Then the fun part begins on placing it down on the new book. And so um, I'm going to, again, use my Tight Bond Quick and Thick glue. Um, another good glue would be to use an epoxy. Uh, Gorilla Glue makes an epoxy where you just push it out of a tube, mix it together, and it usually sets within like five minutes, which is nice. Um, but a t epoxy holds really well as outside in the elements as well. So I would recommend doing that if you don't have this tight bond glue. And so I'm just kind of dinking around and trying to figure out where I'm going to put everything because I did want to put the title on the top somewhere. And so I think I'm just going to yeah keep the dragonfly off. I'm going to go in with my pencil real quick and write Garden Friends. And then I'm going to paint that on the front and then the spine as well. And then I ended up putting that dragonfly on the spine part, which I think turned out super cute too. If you don't want to hand paint the title on, you can also use stamps. That will um, give you a good title using black ink or white, or it can also give you a good outline to paint in in between. So depending on the type of font, it's always easy just to get on the computer and print out your, your font and then use some carbon paper to trace that onto your, your garden block there. So same thing, just going in with the tight bond, I'm going to put a bead down kind of the center a little bit and then pull it out to the, the ends just a little bit and then make sure to push down pretty hard and um, I did end up flipping after about an hour or so, I flipped the block onto the front of it so that it has the weight down on those molds to keep them nice and even while they're drying overnight. So I would definitely recommend that. That way you don't have any little um, areas that are kind of popping up from the brick. And if it's already the molds super, super hard, what you can do is use a heat gun to heat it up a little bit and it makes it more pliable and bendable. That way you can kind of bend it around.
So here's where I put that dragonfly on there. And what made it easy to get that glue out of there was I just used my little tiny artist brush and uh, just pulled the glue away while holding it down so that it doesn't move around. And that made it super easy for the cleanup part of it. And then you just wanna make sure to clean your brush as soon as possible so it doesn't harden. But aren't they so cute? I just love them. And like I said, you can get creative and do like um, transfers or decoupage or probably fabric and stamping. You can do all kinds of things and set them out in your garden next to your flowers and it would just really make that garden look super cute. So let me know what your thoughts are and I hope you have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.